caught in a web, soon it will be eaten. Adam, Adam. The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King, released in 2003 and is directed by Peter Jackson, who I've talked about enough on this channel. He's directed all these Middle Earth films. Let's move on. And this film is starring Elijah Wood, Sean Austin, Viggo Mortensen, Ian McKellen, Orlando Bloom, John Reeves Davies, Dominic Monaghan, Billy Boyd, Liv Tyler, Kate Blanchett, Hugo Weaving, David Wenham, Miranda Otto, Carl Urban, and Andy Serkis. And we are closing out our Middle Earth franchise week today because it was a PayPal recommendation and donation from one of my supporters on this channel, Dr. Camp. Thank you so much for recommending all these movies to me. I love Middle Earth. I love Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit. You know, the book and the cartoon were great. But I had been meaning to go back and watch the Lord of the Rings films for a while because I used to watch them religiously. You know, once I had one of them, I would watch it on repeat. And then when I got Two of them, I would watch both of them back to back on repeat, and then so on with the third. Actually, I think this film holds the record for me personally the most times that I've seen a movie in a theater during its initial run. I say I saw this like three or four times in the theater, which, you know, I, I'm happy to support this film, and it's an awesome film. I love this film, but I never want to do that again. I like the one singular experience with going to the movies to see the movie, if I go to the movies at all to watch it. There's just something special, I feel, about going for that one-time movie-going experience, as opposed to go seeing the same movie multiple times in theaters. I just, I haven't done it since. The armies of Isengard have been defeated, and the members of our broken fellowship and the Rohirrim are celebrating. But the enemy in Mordor is regrouping and planning one final large attack on the capital city of men, Minas Tirith of Gondor. Plus, Minas Tirith has terrible leadership right now, so it's probably a sure victory for the evil guys. But we'll see if the returning heir to the throne, Aragorn, son of Elethor, will be able to defeat the armies and reclaim the throne. All while trying to distract the eye of Sauron while something is moving in the lands of Mordor. Two small little hobbits carrying the Ring of Power so close to Mount Doom and destroying it, saving all of Middle-earth. Once again, Good job at a plot synopsis. That was great. Because again, like Fellowship of the Ring that I reviewed yesterday, there's a lot of things that happen in here and a lot of obstacles and a lot of missions that certain people go on. And then with, from those certain people, then that branches off. And then that person does something and that person does something. So many things happen on in here. But the way that it's edited and constructed and how everything flows together, I'm shocked that it works so well. And I know from watching the behind the scenes footage on all the extended versions of this, which is what I watch. I watch the extended version of this film, which I have to tell you, Dr. Camp, watching all of these films with the extended version, I mean, The Hobbit was just terrible enough because they are they were already stretching for stuff to fill in their films, and now you're going to extend it for me? Come on, man. But then to add that on top of the extended version of these two films, usually the reviews I do each week, there may be one long epic film, but then there are like two other short ones, like a comedy or a small little indie drama. But to have a like, constant four-hour and three-hour films back to back to back, I lost a lot of hours this week. But going back to my main point, watching all the behind-the-scenes footage, this production was falling behind like crazy. They were adding stuff last minute constantly, to the point where I believe Elijah Wood went up to Peter Jackson at the premiere and said, so, how's the movie? And Peter Jackson said, huh, you, know, you tell me, I haven't seen it yet. The frickin' premiere of the final chapter of one of the biggest franchises and trilogies of all time, and Peter Jackson's like, yeah, so I, I put the finishing touches, but haven't watched it all the way through yet, so we'll see. And it only went on to win 11 out of 11 Academy Awards that year, so. Let me just repeat that, though, for those of you that missed it. This film won 11 out of 11 Academy Award nominations. It batted 100%. It has tied the record for the most Academy Award wins with 11 with Ben-Hur and Titanic, both of whom were not pitching perfect, were nominated for other categories. So with this film batting 100 and matching the most Academy Awards, does that make this the best film of all time? I would assume, according to the Academy, it does. But anyway, moving on, let's talk about how great and fantastic this movie is. Me being a kid, a young teenager, being so impressionable at this age, because it's my, my early teenage years, so I'm sitting there thinking, oh, this is it. This is 
everything that I love. I mean, hell, I love this even more than Star Wars. That was my viewpoint at the time. And I tried desperately to get their opening day to watch this movie. I got tickets, but I had no car ride home. But it was totally worth it to go to the movie theater and then walk all the way home. I did it, and I'm not ashamed to admit it. And it wasn't like the theater was just down the road from me. Like, no, this was like on the other side of town. It took me a while to get home, but it was worth it because I wanted to see this movie opening day, which was a Wednesday for some reason. And it's the culmination of all of these heroes and, and their journeys that they have in this series. In particular with Aragorn. I mean, he's, this title is about him, Aragorn coming back to the throne and getting his throne and really leading his people and the way he goes about doing that. I remember reading that in the book and reading about the ghost army and thinking like, oh god, that's going to be so freaking cool. And thank god Peter Jackson edited out all of the ending stuff with the ghost army after he went into the mountain to try to get them and having them decide what to do. In the extended version, we actually see their decision like, yes, we will fight with you. But in the theatrical version, we don't know. We don't know if they're going to kill the three of them that go to see them. Aragorn goes in and says, join me, fight with me, what say you? And then we never see him again for at least an hour. That's great anticipation. That's great storytelling. Thank God they were smart enough to edit that down. Which I said it in my Fellowship of the Ring review that I sent out yesterday. I mean, I would pick the theatrical version of all these films over the extended version. The extended version has some great things in here. Like, for example, this extended version gives an ending to the character of Saruman, something that was definitely missing from the theatrical version. We needed to see the ending of Saruman, the defeat of Saruman. Hell, even in the book, it doesn't happen the way that it happens in the extended version. It actually happens at the end of the book, and he's waiting in the Shire for Frodo and the other hobbits to come home. But in the extended version, we see his death, and we see Wormtongue, and it makes more sense. In the theatrical version, it's just like, no, he has no power anymore. We walked all the way here just to make sure that he's not doing anything, which he's not. Okay, so let's go back to Rohan. Not doing anything? Okay. But we also have a bunch of other things that, you know, I could care less about. Faramir getting with Eowyn when they're injured and not going off to the final battle. It's like, yes, that was in the book, I know, and it's nice to know where these characters end up, but them getting together, I, I don't care. You know, it's funny, I say this film was edited down, I mean, this film is three hours long, the theatrical version. So for those of you out there who hated the Snyder Cut of Justice League because it was so long, I hope you don't like the extended version of Return of the King, otherwise you're a hypocrite. But again, the editing in a the theatrical version is much better. We have badass moments with Legolas on the elephant with a great little punch and tag at the end with Gimli saying, huh, yeah, you did that, but it only counts as one. Perfect. I love their relationship. The timing, the comedy there is fantastic. And the whole battle of Minas Tirith is, it's a spectacle. It was something that I had never seen on screen before, and many people hadn't seen on screen before. Yes, we've seen some epic battles, but not to the extent of this with all the use of CGI and practical effects, the amount of horse riders that they had running across the fields. I wish I was there that day, just watching them and listening to it and hearing the thunder of all those horses. Huh, I, I get goosebumps just thinking about it. But after that battle, we do have to cut to Frodo and Sam making their way to Mount Doom to destroy the ring. And it, it's funny, you know, in, in Two Towers, it really became more of the Aragorn story for me. And I started caring about them more, that whole trio. So when all the focus finally falls completely on Frodo and Sam and Shelob, the big spider that we that we don't talk about, that's... Yeah. It's a little jarring because it's like, no, 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 I want battle, I want stuff. But here we are with Frodo and Sam just trying to get to the frickin' Mount Doom and they're still frickin' walking. All these people in their walking habits. And we also have the brilliant performance capture performance from Andy Serkis as Gollum. He the set the standard for what performance capture is. Him on set in the bodysuit with the dots on his face so that the guy is over in LA or wherever it was doing all the computer generated stuff with Gollum. It's fantastic. And the voice work of Gollum. The so precious, the so precious. I need to find an excuse every time to do a Gollum voice because I gotta say my impersonation of Gollum. I mean, I'm not gonna toot my own horn, but I think it's pretty freaking fantastic. It's what happens when you're a teenage nerd sitting alone in your room all the time watching these movies. You just figure out how to do that stuff, and, uh, and you don't kiss any girls, so...
Yeah, that was high school. The Return of the King is the ending to one of the best trilogies in film that has ever been created. There's a strong argument that it could be the strongest trilogy, like the greatest trilogy out of all of them. And I'm not going to fight anyone who says that. Is it my favorite trilogy? I mean, it's up there. I don't know. I don't think it's number one, but it's definitely up there for me. The marketing for this film, the way these films were shot back to back to back and releasing a year apart from each other, it's, it's brilliant marketing, it's brilliant production, because not only does the film and the characters go on a journey, the crew, the directors, everyone involved in the film goes on a journey, and the audience who anticipates and watches these films for this three-year period, we go on a journey, and we want to know the journey of these characters, and when it comes to an end, we feel that we've completed our own hero's journey. That's why I love this movie. I love this franchise. And yeah, enough said. I'm going to give The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King, four and a half out of five Blu-rays. It's good. It's good. It's good. All right, everyone. Now comes my favorite part of my videos where I pick which movie I'm going to be watching next. And June is really the whole franchise month. I've, I've decided apparently this year because there is a movie coming out next weekend called Minions The Rise of Gru. And there's a whole Despicable Me Minions franchise that has happened. And I thought, you know what? I haven't reviewed any of those films. Why not review all the Despicable Me movies? So that's what we're going to be doing next week, starting with Despicable Me, Steve Carell, and all the minions and all the fun stuff and we'll check it out next time so guys if you've seen the return of the king what did you think about it what is your ranking of all the lord of the rings films and hell even throwing the hobbit films in there too what is your ranking of all the middle earth films in this franchise whatever you thought comment below let me know what you thought about it and as always if you like what you see here if you like my take on movies then hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell see you on the next time i'm releasing next movie review so guys i will see you next time with my review of despicable me so in the meantime be well be good to each other and go watch a movie. Take care, guys.